Okay. Now it is time to look at the edge of the paint stick or the boomerang as we're going to make it. What we want to do is shape a, an airfoil. And uh, let me go ahead and draw what that would look for you. So if you're looking at the end of the stick like that, I'll, I will enlarge it. This right here would be the halfway mark. This would be the quarter mark. And what we want to do is we want to sand off the, uh, the wood so that we form an airfoil. So the front half of the, the front quarter of the wing, we're going to round it off like this. And then the back half of the wing, or the trailing edge, we're going to bring it down like this. Okay. Now you want to go to almost a point, but not quite. If you sand it all the way to a point, the wood becomes weak and it breaks easy. And at the front, um, we will end up rounding a little bit of the bottom as well, but make sure you round a lot more off the top than you do off the bottom. This will end up being the, the shape of the wing. Okay. Tools that you'll need for this activity will be a rasp, which is a really rough file, a half round, half flat, just regular cross cut file, different grits of sandpaper, and uh, two clamps. Okay, to start out, you want to clamp the uh, boomerang to the table. You want it right on the edge of the table so that you're not going to file the actual table itself. You're going to use the rough file first, or the rasp, and then after you're done with that, you'll use the more fine file. And then after that one, you'll go to the sandpaper. So you don't want to remove everything all once with the rasp. You want to get as much as you can, but don't go too far. What you want to do is you want to start at the tip and end at the base at the same time that you're moving across half the length of the, uh, the wing. So I'm going to start here at the tip and slowly file that way. You don't want to push super hard, otherwise it'll just dig in and you won't be able to move. Just a light, light pressure and work tip to base at the same time that you're moving across. This will make sure that uh, you're working evenly and that everything will look the same. You want to have the file almost flat. So here's flat and just barely tip it up. It's a very, very slight angle that you're putting on the trailing edge. After you've finished the roughing procedure, you should go to the more fine file. And I'll use the rounded edge and uh, use that to get rid of all the scratches left behind by the rasp. This one won't take off nearly as much or as fast as the rasp will. We've basically gone until the, the line that we drew in the center of the boomerang has almost disappeared. Okay. You can also use the flat side to even everything out. After you're done with this file, then you move to 80 or 100 grit sandpaper. And you can do the sanding part after you've taken the uh, boomerang off the table. It might actually be easier that way. After you're done with one side, you move the clamps over, and then you will use the rasp on the other end. And again, work from tip to base and slowly remove the majority of it. Now this is going to be the leading edge where I'm only taking off of a, a quarter. So this side won't take nearly as long as the trailing edge. There's this little part in the middle that you don't touch because that's where they're going to be glued together when they cross. So it's pointless to, to sand on it. So go ahead and just leave it alone. Uh, the trailing edge we did more of a flat. The leading edge we want it to be rounded. 
So sometimes your file will be flat and sometimes it will be more angled. So as, you, as you're stroking, continue to change the angle so that you get a rounded front edge. Remember to leave some of the work to be done by the other methods of sanding. If you don't get out all the scratches when you do your paint job, it won't look very good because you'll have scratches in the paint and it just won't look very good. This one actually still flies great, but it doesn't look pretty. I'm going to use the finer one. The, uh, the edge of the boomerang closest to the outside is more important than the inside of the boomerang because that's the the outside of the boomerang is spinning faster and it it generates the majority of the lift so the profile is even more important towards the tips of the boomerang so make sure you spend a good amount of time really making that look good after you're done with one side of the boomerang you flip it around and do the other side show you what's been done here if you look at this it's actually angled down Okay. So it's not to a super sharp point, but it's to a, a dull point that won't snap and break if you rub your thumb on there. Okay. So then like, like this it would be easier to, to sand it while you're holding it because then you can rotate it and get a much better sanding action on there. So I'll go ahead and finish this off and then We'll get ready to glue it together.